The role we played through the Mountaineer Challenge Academy can't be understated. We're rebuilding the state's next generation. To give you kind of an idea of the cadet stats from this year's second cohort, showcasing the importance of the program in West Virginia, currently we had 206 cadets. Of those, 102 come from single parent families. Four are, are in state custody. 13 had both parents deceased. Two had both parents incarcerated, and 31 come from non-traditional heads of household. Thank you. West Virginia State Police District Commander Greg Loft. They got me following a general. I really don't like that. That's kind of intimidating. But uh, just to go off real quick what the uh, general and the chief were saying, the relationships you build in law enforcement are very important. And that's how you accomplish a lot of goals. Um, being a state policeman, I've, I've been able to work in different counties uh, along across the state. And what we have here is special. It is special. Um, so the support between the, the Huntington PD and the military and the Calvary County Sheriff's Department State Police, it, it goes a long, a long way. And that with the support of the community, without the, the community support, local government, the mayor, and, and things of that nature, were, were nothing. So the, the support of the citizens is very important. And we're going to do our part in, in fighting evil and, uh, and making this community and county a safer place. Um, because when that when that becomes a reality, making a safer place, things will, will, will go uh, you know, ahead as far as uh, businesses and, and community relations, and, and that's what we're striving for. So thank you for being here, thank you for taking time tonight today, and uh, we appreciate it. Marshal President, Dr. Colonel Gilbert. Good afternoon and welcome to Marshall University. Governor, we are always pleased to host you on our campus. Uh, it's indeed a great afternoon to be in my Huntington. I want to start by publicly thanking a true son of Marshall, Governor Justice, uh, for his tremendous assistance and support that's provided our community continued success pushing back on drug-related violence and the scourge of substance abuse disorder. It took someone with strong leadership and a desire to make a difference to bring all these groups together. We thank Justice, uh, Governor Justice for being that person. The recent efforts of the National Guard and the State Police combined with our campus, local and federal law enforcement agencies have been the key to getting us to this exciting day. Our community has taken a public stand that we will not tolerate illegal drugs or drug-related violence. We work to help those suffering from substance abuse disorder return to sober lives, but we are standing strong with our friends here today against drug dealing, violence, and the illicit drug trade. So thank you, Governor. Thank you, Brigadier General Crane and who I understand is a son of Marshall, is that correct? I think that was right. I want to thank you for everything you've done to help Huntington. I also want to express my gratitude to U.S. Attorney Mike Stewart, Secretary Jeff Sandy, and others for their assistance. We're also pleased to have representatives with us today from Senator Manchin and Senator Capito's offices supporting us in our efforts. The encouraging statistics that we heard from Chief Dial are testament that we are that our efforts have made all the difference in the world. We know that almost every city and every town in our state is dealing with the issues of addiction and related crime, including Charleston, Morgantown, Wheeling, Beckley, and Martinsburg. We also know that communities throughout the entire country are waging the same battles that we are waging. What is different about Huntington is that Marshall University and the community have come together to develop innovation solutions, innovative solutions, and we are beginning to see those results. In fact, I would be so bold as to say that Mayor Williams and the city of Huntington are leading the charge nationally. 
This, we were among the first communities to implement forward-thinking initiatives that Chief Dial has mentioned, like the Quick Response Team and a countywide substance abuse prevention partnership. At Marshall's Joan C. Edwards School of Medicine in Cabell Huntington Hospital, we have physicians who are world experts at treating drug-exposed newborns, and we are working to share uh, that information to others. We've established a, di a division of addiction studies at our medical school and hired one of the country's leading addiction researchers to be the director. Last fall, we launched an interdisciplinary addiction studies minor to give students in many fields the opportunity to learn in depth about substance abuse disorder and recovery. It was one of the first such programs in the country, and the list goes on. Because the drug epidemic reached us first, we are ahead of the curve in finding answers. And these latest figures presented today certainly point to our success. Violent crime is down. Property crime is down. Overdoses are down. Although, as Chief Dial has alluded, we're not done yet and we're not out of the woods, we are rapidly turning the corner here in Huntington. I love Huntington. I like to call it hashtag my Huntington. Uh, and we have something special here. And I am confident that together we will continue to solve these problems. So thank you again, Governor, for your support and for your extraordinary leadership and vision. We look forward to continued partnerships and success. And we know that we're going to be successful in Huntington. Thank you. Huntington Mayor Steve Williams. Governor, in uh, mid-December, we found ourselves dealing with some things that uh, no, nobody in a community wants to have to deal with and certainly no public officials want to deal with. And Governor, I know that uh, you didn't sign up to be governor to uh, spending most of your time dealing with drug interdiction and, and addiction problems. I know why you signed up. It's to make our city and our state and our cities more prosperous. We can't do that if we don't fix this problem. And when I had an opportunity to speak with uh, Secretary Sandy, General Hoyer, uh, frankly, the Governor, they made it very clear that you placed a very direct indication, we're going to straighten this thing out. So the National Guard came with the technical assistance and administrative support. State police was uh, right there. Uh, Governor, when I was seeing the level of support that we were going, so forgive me for this Southern saying, but I just want to say, bless your heart. <laughs> for doing all that you have done and bringing this support to, to, to Huntington. The, the fact is, is that the problem that we have in this, in this community, in this state, and in this nation is a multifaceted problem that requires multifaceted solutions. And the key to those solutions are partnerships. Prevention, absolute interdiction, we have to make the most of our law enforcement to make sure that we are intercepting what is being done. But we, we have a moral, ethical, and personal responsibility to provide recovery opportunities for those who are suffering from addiction. They are our friends, they are our neighbors, they are our family members. So over the past four or five years, our community, Huntington, has pioneered solutions uh, to, to fight this. The centerpiece of fighting the solutions is making sure that we have everyone in our community, everyone in our community, taking ownership of the problem that is before us. What we've encountered shows the heart of Huntington, but it reflects the heart of all West Virginians. So we know we're not the only ones suffering from, from this in our state. But as I travel across the nation, we're not the only ones that are suffering from this in, in our nation. But the one thing that I know that we have, and Governor, 
frankly, what you are bringing gives us the indication that we can set the standard for the rest of the nation. Because if it can be corrected here, and we pilot the programs here, we identify sooner what works, quicker what needs to be fixed, others around the nation will be able to follow. So we created an Office of Drug Control Policy, efforts at Marshall University in fighting addiction. Marshall Health and Capital Huntington Hospital and St. Mary's are stepping up in very innovative ways. Neonatal abstinence syndrome, as a result, Lily's Place was created, setting a standard for the rest of the nation to follow. The Capital Huntington Health Department with its own harm reduction uh, program and the quick response team, all of these have just happened in just a few years are more than what any other community, most communities in the nation are doing and certainly what others around the state will, will be able to follow. By now, Governor, I'm sure you are aware, but others ha haven't heard of the positive trends that are occurring. It does not mean that we are waiving the mission accomplished sign. Absolutely not. But we know that we're beginning to win some battles. That overdoses have diminished by 41% year over year. Chief Dial was indicating the level of violent crime that is, is dropped. Why? Once again, because of partnerships that, that we have. <coughs> what we're finding very, very simply is by collaborating, talking to one another, by mayor's office, talking to the governor's office. When I pick up the phone and I call Secretary Sandy, he either picks up the phone or is calling back within five minutes. When I pick up the phone and I call General Hoyer, even when he's out of the country, he's answering the, the phone. When we pick up the phone and call the, the, the state to police, we know that we have the talent to be able to fight the crime here. But our citizens pay taxes for for city services, for county services, the sheriff's department, for state services from state police, state services from the National Guard, federal services from the DEA, the ATF, the FBI, government because of the leadership that you provide, that you provided earlier in the year to make sure that everybody came to the table, the citizens in our city can rest safely now with the knowledge that their tax dollars are going to work to keep their families safe. Once again, bless your heart. Thank you, guys. Each of these representatives have touched on it, but the governor's office wants to recognize that there is a federal nexus to this, and we appreciate our partners at the federal level particularly uh, United States Attorney Mike Stewart, the efforts of his office has done to help us prosecute these, these uh, cases as they, they take them in. I'd uh, next like to introduce uh, the Department of Military Affairs and Public Safety, Secretary Jeff Sandy. What you're hearing today from these speakers is no surprise to me because prior to the governor signing the executive order, bringing the National Guard into Huntington, he also signed another executive order in Wood County, West Virginia. When he signed that executive order, he brought in all the resources needed because Wood County was in a bad situation with a major, the worst industrial fire they had had in over 30 years. 10.30 at night, on a Sunday night, his statement to myself and one of his staff members was, you cannot put a value on a West Virginian's life. Now think of that. How powerful is that? Second, bring in all the king's horses, all the king's men. Do what it takes to get this taken care of. That's the type of leader that we have. And that's the type of leader that asks for long-term goals. Law enforcement cannot do it all because the people from the Detroits and the Columbuses, et cetera, they come here because we have customers. We have to reduce the customers, which will solve our problem. 
And as a result, I'm here today to announce three what we feel significant programs that are going to take effect now. The first one is education. The FBI statistics show that the age group of 16 to 20 is the largest group now that is using illegal controlled substances. We need to educate our young people soon. And at this time, I'd like to introduce Drug Enforcement Administration Group Supervisor Gary Newman, if you can stand up, Gary, and Community Outreach Specialist, Ms. Lacey, and Jack Lucar. You can stand up. Jack Lucar is a retired Putnam County Sheriff and is our Director of Drug, drug Control Policy. I wanted them to stand up to let you know that in the past year, they have went out and educated over 8,000 West Virginian youth youth on the why you should not use drugs. And you guys can sit down now. I need to say one story about Jack. Jack went to talk to an individual in one of our juvenile facilities. That individual was from Huntington. And when Jack talked to him, he was starting a gang in one of our facilities. Jack said, what do you want to do when you get out of here? He goes, I want to go back to Huntington. I want to, and I quote, using the slang, I want to sling drugs in Huntington. Within hours, that young man was crying. And to this day, he's released, and Jack is still in communication with him, and he is getting an education and going to school. That's what we need to do, and that's what the Drug Enforcement Administration what they want us to do also. So today we're announcing DMAPS has 5,500 employees. With the rest of the National Guard, we have over 10,000 employees. And we today we're announcing we're committed. Every middle school and high school in the next 12 months in West Virginia is going to be provided with the DEA 360 program. the demand with our youth. Now, what do we do with the individuals that have been arrested by our law enforcement who's doing an outstanding job? When Governor Justice took office, our corrections was a mess. It was, you can slice and dice it however way you want it, it was a mess. We were arresting in January of 2017 a correction officer every three days. That is sad. We started, we needed to reduce the drugs going into our facilities. How can an arrestee, made by law enforcement, how can they leave back and go back into society and be successful if they're getting the drugs just like they were when they were on the outside? Under the governor's plan, one of the ways they were getting drugs was by the mail. They would use uh, liquid, a Suboxone, put it on the envelope gums. They would have kids draw crayon pictures, uh, and the crayons would be laced with drugs. The inmates would get them, chew the crayon pictures that their kids drew, and get high. And many times we had to take them to hospitals because they overdosed. So we needed to stop drugs coming into our facilities. And a year ago, Governor Justice approved obtaining body scanners like you have at the airport for our facilities. Across the country, they had them, we did not. And, and today we're announcing for the first time that all our regional jail facilities have body scanners and we have seized thousands of dollars worth of drugs before they went in to Western Regional Jail down the road here. see it bad, but it is amazing what people can put in their body cavities to make money. That is, that is morphine. So that's item number two. Item number three, people get incarcerated by our judges. They go to our facility, and many cannot wait until they get out so they can get drugs again. So Jack Lucart and my team 
we are announcing today a program that only one other state has, and that's the state of Texas. And it is as follows. At Western Regional Jail, we're going to start a pilot. And the pilot is for Capitol, Putnam, and Wayne County. This pilot will be, we're taking what is called a pod, a pod consists of places for 32 people to stay. We're going to have a pod for 32 women, 32 men. The, our judges who we have met with and those in the media, I have quotes from the judges who have been briefed on this program. You can have if you want those quotes. But we are going to provide them for six months the best drug rehab that you can get in a facility across the country. We want them at the end of six months after they've completed this program to be able to go back to the circuit court judge that sentenced them and get considered under what is called a Rule 35 motion. So this will be a pilot, and if it's successful, we'll take this all across the state. Now, I'm a money guy. I'm a money guy. When I was in Iraq, I traced Saddam Hussein's money across the world. So someone says, how much does this cost? This is going to save us money. The state of West Virginia is going to pick up that cost for these three counties. And that cost for six months is $640,000. You're saying, why would the state of West Virginia do this? Because in our consultation with the circuit court judges in these counties, if we can successfully get them to complete this course and be weaned off drugs, it saves the state of West Virginia 1.8 million. This is a win-win for both the counties and the state. So, <laughs> we feel that the three initiatives that we announced today will help law enforcement hopefully stop individuals from getting involved in illegal drugs, and once law enforcement gets them to prepare them for a life of productivity in the state of West Virginia, and I thank you. It's my pleasure to introduce my boss, uh, the great, the governor of the great state of West Virginia, Jim Justice.
in all honesty, this is a collaboration right here of exactly what we should do in West Virginia. We should come together, all branches of all of us. We should quit throwing rocks at one another over pettiness and look and truly evaluate what has been done, what has been accomplished, what is the next catastrophe or problem at hand. Secretary Sandy mentioned just this. They did call with a terrible fire in Parkersburg. It was a private building. The people had private insurance. The decision had to be made, and it had to be made right then. What are you going to do? Are you going to squabble with the insurance company another 10 days and let those fumes go all over Kingdom Come? Who knows the level of damage that could happen to children or whomever? Are you going to allow schools to be closed? What are you going to do? Or are you going to act? And I told him without any hesitation, now, the governor's contingency fund, now, do the job. Put the fire out. In all honesty, this community and these great people behind me, through a collaboration of school and city and state and federal and all the great people that we have, had a problem, had a giant fire. And they came to me and said, Governor, will you be behind us? You see, I've said it till I'm blue green. And a lot of times it doesn't seem to resonate but I'm only here for one thing. I am only here to try to help, to try to solve problems. I don't need a pat on the back. I don't need anything, but I am a problem solver. And I'll promise you, if you look at the list of accomplishments that we've pulled off, it is amazing what is going on within our state. Our state is really moving and it is something to celebrate. Hope is coming back in lots and lots of different areas. This situation with the drug situation within our state could have very well cannibalized us, and we've still got work to do. Now let me jump from there all the way to this city and this school. You know, I came here from the University of Tennessee following a little girl with red hair that was down to her waist. And that little girl and I were still some way, somehow still together over 600 years of marriage now. <laughs> now, I can remember that little girl like it was nothing, like it was yesterday at 12 Pole Creek, pushed me in the river in the middle of the winter, and as I was falling head first in the river, I threw my hand back and she pushed me off a boat dock, and the only thing I could do was just grab it for air, and I happened to grab that hair. And as I went in head first, she came in head first over top of me. Now I say that because of this, and I want all the kids, all the great students of this great university, and all kids to realize just one thing. Growing up, there's no kid alive that had more fun than me. There's no possible way. I played all kinds of different sports, wasn't very good at most all of them. I absolutely played every prank on anybody I could, and they played all their pranks on me, and we had more fun than you can imagine. And never once, never once, did I smoke a cigarette or do any type of drug in any way and I had more fun than any kid alive. I would tell you, you don't have to have this in your life in order to have a great life. And even to do something that may even be more phenomenal than anything, to be sitting in front of you today being your governor of all things. Now, I'll end by just saying this. I love Marshall. And I love Huntington. And I love the state of West Virginia. Now, anywhere and everywhere I can to help, I'm going to help. 
I remember this community this way. You know, I grew up in Beckley, West Virginia. We didn't go many places. I wish you could see the house that when we moved from Tennessee back to Beckley, I was born in Whitesville, but moved back to Beckley, where we lived. A little kind of A-frame white house at a dead end street, and across the road was a little cemetery where I played all the time. We rented that house. Now, let me tell you, I grew up where my mom would have thrown a holy fit if we if I would have opened the refrigerator door too many times in a day because she thought that we were burning up too much electricity. Now, let me tell you, when I came to Marshall, this town not only embraced me, but this town was unbelievable. It, it was thriving. To me, it was always a sweater town. It was people that dressed up and looked good. And it was amazing, it was an amazing community that was going in every right direction, direction it could go. A school that was fabulous beyond belief. And you're a gateway city. And you had a big, big, big time problem. Now, Nothing on earth would tickle me more than to see you as the Huntington that I saw. That I was gifted enough to be able and privileged enough to be able and honored enough to be able to have been here for the years that I was here. Six years, four undergraduate, two graduate. And absolutely, it was the greatest. I know we've had problems I know we should terribly recognize our successes. I know we should not sit on our laurels and wait for the next problem to occur. And I know that we're not going to do that. You don't know what an honor it is to, for me to be here and what an honor it is to know that this great city, this great state is doing what we're doing today. So for all of you, and for all those that are out there, I mean it when I tell you I love you. I really do. And I'll do anything at any hour of the day, anywhere that I can to help. So God bless you and congratulations. You're doing great stuff. Proud of you. Thank you for coming.